if the president should decide mm -hmm. that it is not working in Afghanistan, it's just not working, mm -hmm. and he cannot send more troops, what is the consequence to the United States directly in terms of national security? Well, first of all, time is not on our side, so we need a decision pretty quickly. Uh, I think history is very clear that when the Taliban took over Afghanistan, it became a base for attacks on the United States and our allies because of their relationship with Al Qaeda. I fear that failure in Afghanistan could lead to that uh, scenario and a certain desta destabilizing effect on the region. I want to address the question of the number of troops and the length of time that they're there, though, because the number has been mentioned, 40,000. We don't know what the exact number would be. As we heard Jake say, this is a country the size of California and New York combined. Many people think that's not nearly enough for counterinsurgency. My question is, 40,000 enough? If they ask for 100,000, would you say unlimited? And what about how long they stay? Five years, 10 years, 100 years? I, I went through that before during the campaign <laughs> concerning Iraq. But the, look, um, 40,000 additional, there's already 68,000 there on their way, and it's 30 to 40,000. Uh, there are still populated areas that need to be under control. You need to go in, and you can adopt the same strategy that worked in Iraq for Afghanistan. You go in, you, you clear, you hold. You allow the political, economic, and cultural life to continue. And uh, look, there are great problems here, a corrupt government, a lot of problems. But I would say in comparison to Iraq when we started the surge, not as bad. But isn't the standard ratio two troops per 100 inhabitants for effective counterinsurgency? And you're talking about 40,000 villages. Well, we're talking about uh, the ink blot strategy where you go into the populated areas, you clear out the bad guys, you hold the area, and you gradually expand as the expanded Afghan army and police take over these responsibilities. That's what we did in Iraq, and that's the classic counterinsurgency. The debate here, Diane, is between counterinsurgency strategy and counterterrorism strategy. Counterterrorism strategy, in my view, will not work. Would you say that the U.S. should be looking at another five, ten years at the very least? I, I don't know the length of time, but I know within a year to 18 months we could start experiencing success. The people of Afghanistan don't want the Taliban back. They don't want them back. And the government, the uh, Karzai government, has to clean up its act. But the, and also the Afghans are very good fighters, and they have been fighting well. There's just not enough of them. A question for you about what uh, former president of Pakistan, uh, Pervez Musharraf, has said this morning. He says that by the vacillation, meaning the discussion, the public discussion, and talking too much, it shows weakness already by the United States. Do you think this discussion, this debate, shows weakness? Well, I think it may be perceived by some of our allies in Europe and uh, in Pakistan and that region uh, as a bit of, a, uh, of some weakness. And it leans urgency to making the final decisions very quickly. But I also think that um, it's a fact that the strategy was developed last March, announced by the president. He said we had to, we, this is a war of necessity, and I hope he will stick to that. And I believe at the end of the day that he will. I have some sympathy for him. The left base of his party is very much opposed, but uh, I, I, I'm hoping and believe he'll make the right decision, and, and that means uh, agreeing to implement uh, General uh, Admiral Mullen, General Petraeus, and General McChrystal's recommendation. Senator McCain, again, our thanks to you and for your vantage point this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.